Chapter 25 Dominic watched as Francesco's hand clutched the rope tighter. Give me the rope, Father Tommaso said, placing his hand on Francesco's. I know how difficult this is for you, but I can't, Father, I can't, Francesco cried, kneeling down beside Violetta. Violetta moved close to him and tenderly licked his cheek as though she knew what was about to happen. Move forward, please, an agent's voice commanded. The man behind Francesco moved forward, nearly knocking him over. My son, give her to me, Father Tommaso whispered. I will take good care of her. I won't let her out of my sight, I promise you. Gently he took the rope out of his hand, but Francesco hugged Violetta to him, clinging to her for dear life. Violetta's eyes had widened with terror. Francesco, I'm surprised at you, Father Tommaso said sternly, punctuating each sentence with a flick of his wrist. You are the head of your family. Is this how you will act in America? You must set an example for Antonio. You must be brave. Francesco let go of Violetta, but he didn't take his eyes off her. He finally, he stood up. I'm sorry, Father, he said. It's just that I shall probably never see her again. I know, I know, my son, the priest whispered. You probably will never see her again. He took all three boys in his arms at once, and, teary-eyed, he gave them one last loving hug. Then he gave the rope a gentle tug. Violetta followed, looking back at Francesco with a questioning look. Francesco stared helplessly after her as Dominic grabbed him by the arm, and they made their way up the gangplank. Francesca was frantic to have one last look at Violetta. It was all Dominic could do to hold him back. They searched the crowds through the blur of bodies, boxes, and baskets. Francesca was the first to spot her, although she couldn't see him. He watched as her frightened eyes searched through the crowd, looking from one person to the next. I'm sorry, Francesca whispered. I'm so sorry. He tried to smile through his tears. Let her sleep near you at night, father, he yelled into the roar of the crowd, and don't let her eat bad weeds, and make sure to rub her nose each morning. She likes that, and... Suddenly his voice was drowned out by the deafening sound of the ship's whistle. The line surged forward, and Antonio clung to Francesco as they were carried along by the wave of people. The loud whistle of the ship blew again, and everyone turned to look back at the docks and wave goodbye to their loved ones. With tears streaming down his face, Francesco stumbled forward, searching in the sea of faces on the wharf. By now, Father Tommaso and Violetta had blended into the mass of bodies. People shouted, out, shouted and called out to one another, their voices all blurred into one loud roar that echoed in Dominic's ears. Arrivederci. Goodbye, my sweet. He saw Francesco mouth the words, Arrivederci, Avaletto. Arrivederci. Dominic's eyes wandered over the crowd and then beyond them to the hills that rose up from the city. He remembered his first look at Avaletto, the sounds of the birds and the smells, the gentle curve of the trees, the bittersweet smell of lemons. He thought of the five of them there, Francesco, Salvatore, Antonio, Violetta, and himself. He remembered them talking, laughing, and singing. He recalled the happy times they spent together on those sunny hills. Goodbye, Avaletto, Dominic whispered, and as he did, he heard the hushed whispers of hundreds of goodbyes all around him.